We're going to talk today about, it's personal, Isaac Newton and the Great Plague. Now, Isaac Newton, famous for his theory of uh, gravitational relativity and, and his laws of motion. Now, if this apple would have hit Isaac Newton on the head, he would not have survived to give us those <laughs> natural laws. But I want to talk about 1665 when Isaac Newton enlists as a young man of 20 in his second year in Cambridge. And uh, first of all, we got a picture of Isaac uh, Newton there when he was about this age. Of course, the first thing I thought of, Buzz, was, man, what a head of hair that Isaac Newton has, and where did mine all go? But, uh, you know, Isaac Newton went to Cambridge with a lot of hope, with a lot of, he'd done a lot of noodling in his head. He was a student of nature. Isaac Newton was a devout Christian, first of all, for his entire life. In fact, he consecrated his life as a Christian to God solely. And to the day he died, he remained a celibate and a virgin for the Lord Jesus. Isaac Newton was probably the greatest scientist that had ever lived. And we're going to explain that here in a minute. But Isaac Newton faced one of the greatest ravages in uh, science and uh, history when the Great Plague of London broke out in 1865, and they had to remove all the students out of Cambridge. Now, the plague had broken out in Cambridge, but if you can think of the, gra uh, the gravity of this moment. Now, we're suffering through a worldwide sickness that has caused a lot of harm and pain and death all over the world. But in the Great Plague of London, in 1865, one quarter of the entire population of London had passed away. That means that one quarter of your friends, one quarter of your relatives, one quarter. And, you know, back then in that science, they didn't know what was the cause of it. They made a lot of guesses, but they never did fully understand. Even when it finished and was over, they never quite understood what had happened to them. Imagine living not only in a great set of fear, but great set of un uh, not understanding what was going on. And all you had to cling to was either your belief in science or your belief in uh, whatever, or you're clinging to God himself. You know, Isaac Newton went home and he quarantined himself on his family farm. But the thing that I admire so much about Isaac Newton in this time is he didn't dig a hole in the ground, bury himself, and think about all the woe that was going on around him. It was very destabilizing uh, for him and his life. I can't imagine the gravity of what he had to go through. But it was in those hours, it was in that time, a way where he could freely let the thoughts of God. That was the choice that I so admired that he made. He could, he had his mind alone with his creator. And being a believer, he let God take his ideas, multiply them through the grace of God, and amazing things happened. He discovered the fractional wavelengths of light, and each one had its own unique characteristic, and he separated the light wavelengths. He also invented a small thing called the Newtonian Reflective uh, Telescope. And now we get to examine the stars through Isaac Newton. Oh, and yes, he invented calculus while he was there. And also the four laws of motion, including his gravitational uh, sort of mathematical equation, force equals mass times acceleration. The bottom line is, without Isaac Newton, there would be no space program. There would be no optics as we know them, the lasers as we know them. There would be no Einstein in the theory of relativity. There would be no science as we know it. We would be living literally in the dark ages without this man. They estimate his IQ to be about 200 to 210. Einstein's was about 165. But the greatest testimony and the greatest quote that I can leave you with from Isaac Newton, this is what he said about this time. This is about the choice that he made and used God in a very difficult situation in his life. He said this. He says, these forced absences in the most dire of circumstances were the most intellectually fruitful of my life. I could let my mind go free and explore the depths of God's order unshackled by the limits of man's curriculum. You know, we can either choose to recoil, to think about all the negative things in our life, hide ourselves, or we can say, God, use the glory of this moment. Use, the Bible says that where sin abounds, where darkness abounds, the grace abounds even more so. Isaac Newton believed that. 
He had a friend from Belgium, which he was corresponding to, and upon the uh, theory of uh, gravitational relativity, they got together and they d invented something like the first uh, mechanical, pure uh, gravitational clock that was accurate in the earth. We use that same principle today because God used him. I'm hoping this morning that as we hear this story, and I challenge myself at the very core of my being that, God, you're going to take this moment, this difficult moment in time. You're not just going to let me get through it, but you're going to do something extraordinary in it because that's what God wants to do with you and I. Do something extraordinary in it. God bless you as you give this morning and think about the courage that he had to have in a time, a greater and more stressful time that we can even imagine. And yet without this man, we couldn't do the things we get to do today. I'm gonna to do two things before we put up our uh, slide to give, because you guys never get to see this, but I get to see this every week. We got a slide from our meetings that were held here, our Feast of Trumpets and Rosh Hashanah service on Monday night and Tuesday, which we broadcasted all over the world. We had 300 of the most influential Jewish and Messianic believers in this auditorium. Some of the greatest thinkers in the United States were right here listening to Dennis Prager. And as well, it was, it was being beamed to every major university and they were beaming that out all over the world. On last night, we had 330 youth in here that had not been able to meet together for two and a half years from all over Southern California. It was electric. It was exciting. The pastors that brought their, their young people here said, this is the shot in the arm that infused us, infused us, we believe, hopefully, of getting our people to come back to church. You know, they couldn't have done this without our church, without us supporting what we do. And you know what? We couldn't do this at all without your support. And I want to let you in on that because you don't get to see that all the time, but I want you to see the reward that you're laying up. Your treasures in heaven are laying up a war. You can give yourself a hand. That's all right. If you're going to give today, I encourage you to use a push pay app. All you have to do is go into your phone on your text and text 77977 to Ian City Church. It'll get you all signed up for push pay if you're not on there yet. You can give to our secure website at uh, everynationcitychurch.com. Go to the giving tab. Follow those instructions as well. If you're going to give today, we've got a secure drop box in the back. And thank you again, as I'm looking into one of these cameras here, for every single person that sends checks in every week faithfully. Without your support, we cannot get to do the things you just saw on the screen. God bless you today as you give.